Hello, this is Laurie Sullivan from Melbourne, Australia. I'd like to uh, present a refractive keratoplasty. This patient's developed graft-host junction ectasia, and you'll see in the two left-hand uh, images there the uh, elevation and, and relative steepening inferiorly. I'm operating from 12 o'clock and marking the inferior uh, area of ectasia with the uh, calipers and some ink. And then I'll use a trefine later to give me a, uh, a guide for the uh, incision that I'll make. I don't commonly need to do this surgery, um, but it is a fairly common problem and often the solution is to replace the graft. Uh, this graft, although it was very old, I think the patient told me 40 years old, uh, was crystal clear and uh, did not need replacing. So here I'm marking the uh, area where I wish to excise outside the graft host junction and that's where the ectasia occurred. I'm using a, a micrometer diamond knife and I measured the depth to be about 550 microns so I'm not intending to go full thickness and wanting to preserve the deeper layers if I can. The patient was snoring at this stage and so you'll see the eye moving a bit and um, I'm just having to move with him so just doing the first incision and then checking it and just re-deepening now. Sometimes with the diamond knife you need to wiggle it side to side a little bit to find the previous track before making your cut. As you see here. And swapping to the left hand, trying to continue along the previously marked area. Just going back with the right hand now and re-deepening. I've got a little bit of tram tracking there and I need to join up those two incisions with that cut. Now to remove the tissue between the cut and the graft host junction, you can see I have a reasonable thickness of cornea in the periphery there to suture with, suture into. And I've just opened the AC inadvertently, just stripping out that ectatic tissue now. And going to the other end and just starting the separation there, making sure we have a reasonable depth. And just stripping it out, pulling it out. And again, uh, inadvertently getting to the AC there with a gush of fluid. Starting the suture in the centre, or near the centre of the incision. Trying to get tight, quite deep and long with the suture, so doing it in two passes. And tying this tighter than you'd expect from the appearance. At the end of the case you'll see that this suture is actually relatively loose and I replace it. But pulling it fairly tight initially. I'm using a 1111 with a slip knot. That's easy to adjust the tension 
in this situation. And it leaves, uh, leaves you with quite a small knot. Just trimming the edge of the uh, donor side there where there's some hypertrophic scarring. And now placing some myocol into the AC. Inflating the AC and the stitch is broken. After seven or eight sutures are in, just checking with the surgical keratometer. And it's a little bit triangular, but it's not too bad. You can see the six o'clock is a bit loose there. Just bearing the knots, removing the broken suture, replacing it. And that one at 6 o'clock now is loose and I'm just going to remove that, cutting it with the tip of the needle and uh, replacing it. Again, just checking with the surgical keratometer at the end of the case, and it's reasonably circular. Checking for leaks with fluorescein. And this is day one post-op, and the patient was 6 on 15 unaided. He's already commenting on how his vision is uh, clearer than pre-op. Still a little bit of corneal edema, and things will improve as that settles, and sutures are sequentially removed. Here's day five post-op and uh, the cornea is clearer and compact, or the graft is clearer and compact. And here's his post-op topography. Quite a lot of astigmatism, but it's fairly regular and should do well with, with a suture removal. Thanks for watching.